hi guys and happy new year so i have disappeared for almost a month but now i'm back with my kitchen chats i have a carrot and a knife so i'm gonna cook again and i'm gonna chat with you uh because i keep saying that but it's true this is the only free time that i get uh to talk to you guys so we'll have to do what what we have uh, so first of all, Happy New Year and I really hope that your transition into 2019 was great. I wish all of you a really nice year full of happiness and joy and health and especially mental health because I think this is one of the most important things your mental health is detrimental for anything it's because if you feel happy on the inside you're gonna be happy if you're not gonna feel happy on the inside no matter what you have on the outside you're not gonna feel happy on the outside so i wish you to feel happy on the inside and um tell me how was your uh, christmas break new year's eve whatever you celebrate in winter those winter times how it was for you i think that it's really cool that people came up with the idea uh, of celebrating something in the darkest time of the year and actually uh, as far as I understand it kind of was an appropriation of pagan traditions because they celebrated this like rebirth of the Sun so when the day starts becoming longer again and uh, they kind of just moved the Christmas to that day so that pagans would have a smoother transition into Christianity at least that's what I read and I think that it makes a lot of sense because I mean like it's really really difficult uh, for most people to live when it's so dark outside all the time and those family gatherings and uh, decorations and holiday spirit and all of that kind of makes it feel better although arguably for some people it's also a very difficult time of the year um, but I hope that you had a nice Christmas and New Year's and whatever uh, I had a really nice one because I went uh, first to Moscow, Russia, and then to Greece. Uh, it was very nice. I have not been to Greece before, so it was my first time. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was not as warm as I expected it to be, but it was still very pretty, a lot of ruins, a lot of ancient stuff. Uh, and I was with the people that I love, so that's also very important. Tell me about your New Year's resolutions. Uh, if you make any because I think that it's a nice time to kind of look at yourself and your life and set a goal of where you want to go this year. You don't necessarily um, have to kind of stick to it if you change your mind throughout the year, if the goal is like really big for example. But I think that it's still good to kind of look at yourself and especially look back at the previous year and to see what you can be grateful for, what you can change, what you have learned. I really, really like this uh, transition periods because you kind of can sit down and reflect on what you have been doing for the past 12 months and kind of set a plan for another 12 months of your life. So I encourage all of you to do that if you haven't done it yet. Also, today that I'm filming it, it's Sunday the 13th of January, maybe I will put it out today if I have enough time but anyway it's the old new year and I know that it's a tradition not in many countries but in Russian it is uh, in Russia so what it is is that we celebrate New Year's as everyone does on the 31st of December so the New Year's Eve and then the beginning of New Year on the 1st of January and for us it's the most important winter holiday. We don't really celebrate Christmas that much. I just found out that in Russia only 5 to 8% of the people are actually religious. So they celebrate religious holidays and fast and whatever they do go to church or something. But in families that are not Christian, which there's almost like, I don't know many people who actually go to church or are religious. Because in the Soviet Union it was forbidden so people kind of just abandoned it in a way and never got it back so uh, most of the people don't really celebrate Christmas or they maybe have like a dinner together not even every year this year I was working during Christmas because here obviously it's not um, 
a holiday because our Christmas is two weeks later than everyone else's so it's on the 7th of January instead of the 25th of December because our church chose to stay with the old style calendar when everyone else moved on so our official calendar is like everybody else's I think it's like Gregorian and Augustine or something like that I don't really know what the names are but so there is this old style calendar and this new style calendar and so we live by the new calendar but we celebrate Christmas by the old calendar and I think that people really like this several weeks of prolonged celebration so they wanted another reason to celebrate and also I mean if you get really drunk on the New Year's Eve then uh, you kind of want uh, another opportunity to start the year, right? So we also celebrate the old style of New Year or we call it Old New Year So it's just the two weeks after the new year. We kind of celebrate the new year old style calendar It's not a national holiday or anything, but everyone celebrates it and uh, People tend to go outside for it. For example, make a picnic in the woods, which kind of seems weird because it's really cold in Russia during this time but it's actually a really good idea I used to do that uh, with my parents and their friends when I was little uh, but anyway I was planning to celebrate with my friends here today because some of my friends are really big fans of this idea but most of them get sick got sick so I will not celebrate today so this is why I'm cooking and talking to you guys which I'm actually very happy about because I missed you so tell me if you have any weird traditions like this in your country if you've heard of that before and just yeah tell me how you have been and I mean I just really miss chatting to you and I want to get back into the habit of posting videos at least sometimes so uh, I wanted to talk about two things uh, one of them is darker than the other, but I mean, it's really interesting for me. So the first one, which is less dark, let's start with a positive thing. I was thinking a lot about how people fall in love and how do we feel attraction to other people and uh, what forms of relationships and stuff like that. And I came to a conclusion that when we love someone, when like romantically or even in a friend's sort of way because I think that like with family you kind of sort of have no choice you have to love your family uh, and also like you have many reasons too because you know especially if it's your parents or like grandparents probably they have done something good for you uh, but with people that we don't really know uh, I feel like when we love someone or when somebody loves us it says more about the person who loves than about the person who is loved because uh, we are very complex creatures and we don't really know ourselves fully or we neither understand ourselves fully uh, and when we kind of fall in love we only know a fraction of that person's personality so we kind of built an image based on that in our head uh, that kind of matches our perception of what is lovable or what is good or whatever uh, unless, I don't know, we have some problems and we just fall in love with completely wrong people uh, which also happens a lot uh, but I think, well, of course it's also a combination of hormones and, I don't know, whatever, the right time and stuff uh, physical attraction, pheromones I don't know how it works actually. Well, I mean, I kind of know, but like not really. So yeah, I was thinking that if you love someone, it doesn't mean that they're a good person or that they deserve it or whatever. It just means that at that exact time, the exact way you saw that person was matching your perception of what a person who you could love is, if it makes any sense. And also if someone loves you, it doesn't mean that you're so great. It just means that they kind of have an image of you that they find lovable yeah. so tell me what you think do you think that it has to do something with the person who is loved as well because of course some people are more lovable than the others but then again maybe they just hit more of this perceptional qualities of other people than the other people so i i don't know i'm a bit confused but this is the new idea that i had um and the other idea is I am really curious about this because I talked to someone yesterday who had the same exact experience as I did with this and so I'm really curious if anyone else had the same thing. So, do you guys remember 
the first time that you realize that you're gonna die one day because i remember it really well and i think that it was one of those points of no return in like my development as a person because uh it was at a birthday party of one of my mom's friends i think i was about three or four or five so around like four years old um and i just suddenly realized very clearly that one day this person that is here like this entity and it was more kind of a religious experiment experience rather than like a real understanding of what death is so i just had this like very clear understanding of that one day this living breathing thing that is anna is going to cease to exist and i had such a crazy existential fear like just come down on me and i was so scared i started crying like crazy i was really inconsolable and my mom was so scared she was like what the hell are you crying about you are gonna make uh her friend who had her birthday sad and at that moment i realized that my mom has no idea what i'm feeling right now first of all and it was already kind of hard on its own because like as a kid you rely on your parents completely and you always kind of know that they understand what's going on with you and there i realized that she cannot help me she doesn't understand like the nature and the grandiosity of the experience that I'm having right now and also uh, I asked her today in the morning I was talking to her on the phone and I was like do you remember it and she doesn't even remember and for me it was like one of the most important experiences in life because then I I don't know like it, it just changed everything somehow and I asked a lot of people because I still re I remember it very vividly and I still remember this kind of inconsolable sadness and despair and like it was just pure animalistic like I don't want to die experience and I was wondering if any of you remembers this from themselves because the people that I ask don't tend to remember it so yeah tell me if you remember anything like that in your life if it changed something in your life because uh, now I'm super curious because I always thought that I was like the only one who had that but yesterday I discovered that I'm not um, so I think I will cut it off here thank you very much for being here with me today uh, let me know how you're doing and chat to me in the comments as always I will answer to everyone and um, I wish you a nice week ahead and a very nice beginning of the new year although it has already been going for like two weeks but yeah be nice humans and love you and see you in the next video